Hello class, so nice of you to turn up. Welcome to this mini-series where we build a GraphQL server that uses the backend technologies of the MERN stack, Node, Express, and Mongo, to expose an API that lets users uh, register, log in, create posts, and like and comment on those posts. Our app will use GraphQL as a middleman between the server and the client, and will give us a number of advantages that I'll explain in the next slide. Our client will be a React application that we will build after this series, but this series is a standalone and can be coupled with any front-end technology. But what is GraphQL? Well, I'm glad you asked. GraphQL is a query language that we can use as part of our server-side code and it sits on our existing API. GraphQL is technology agnostic, meaning that it doesn't care what programming language or database you're using. Whether your API is some code that fetches and writes data on a database, or it's code that consumes another API and gets data from there. As long as you shape the data properly, according to type definitions defined by you, it will receive and send data to the web client without any problems. There are three types of GraphQL operations that we can perform. Queries for reading data, for example, fetching one or multiple posts, and mutations for writing data, which includes creating, updating, and deleting. Examples of this would be um, creating a post, updating user details, or deleting a comment, um, or deleting a like, and subscriptions for listening to changes in our data in real, real time. This is done using WebSockets in the background, and it's useful for things like chat or polling apps. Mostly you'll use queries and mutations. When using GraphQL, whether reading or writing data, we always send a post request with a body that contains some information about what type of data that we want to get back or save on the database. REST APIs were created to have a conventional way of sending and receiving data between the client and the server, but even though these conventions make REST APIs easier to deal with, there can be different types of resources, and there can be different endpoint names and endpoint parameter variables, etc. GraphQL reduces the amount of information needed for developers to learn how to consume an API. By having one main endpoint, fewer operations, and self-documenting APIs. This will become clearer as we start to implement it. A lot of companies like uh, Facebook, Twitter, PayPal, and many more are now using GraphQL in some of their services to benefit from the improvements that uh, it offers over a traditional REST API. The major advantage of using GraphQL is the control over the amount of data requested and sent back to the client. Let's send, let's say, for example, in our homepage of our app, we want to fetch recent posts and we want to show a couple of things about them like timestamps, body, username, and number of likes and comments. Using REST API, we would send a request and get an array of posts, each one looking like this, and then display the details that we want and ignore the rest of the data that we don't need. This isn't strictly speaking a problem, but because in this example we don't need the comments and likes themselves, just the number of them, it would be better if we were to receive something like this. By reducing the amount of data sent back from the server, we decrease bandwidth usage and latency time. We could actually do this by adding another endpoint that returns just that data, and use that on the home page. But this becomes a problem, as we find ourselves writing more endpoints the more pages we have, and which will drastically increase the amount of code that we have to write on the back end, and we have to document all of these endpoints for our front end developers or for anyone consuming this API. You can now see why this approach isn't optimal. GraphQL solves this by letting us send a post request to one endpoint and specify what resource we want, in this case posts, and what fields we want, in this case everything except likes and comments. We can also specify many more factors, like what post, uh, what the post body contains, if we were for example to search for a specific post, or post by a certain user, or a specific number of posts, etc. All of these can be done through one single endpoint and just by changing the request body itself. So 
These are the tech that we're going to be using for this series. Basically, Mern plus GraphQL, well, Merng, if you will, <laughs> will use Apollo server, which uses an Express server in the background. Well, we can also use something like Express GraphQL or GraphQL Yoga. They all do the job well, but I personally prefer the tools that come shipped with Apollo server. Like I mentioned, this series will be a standalone. And right after the series, we'll implement the front end using React with hooks and context API, and we'll use Apollo client there and the new Apollo React hooks library to make sure that we write our app using the most up-to-date features of the frameworks that we're using. So I wanted to do a demonstration of the server that we're going to be building. So this is our server application running at port 5000. Uh, you can have it at slash uh, GraphQL or you can have it just at the, the base URL. It doesn't make a difference. Um, so this is the GraphQL playground and one of the tools that we get from Apollo server. And uh, here I wanted to show you some examples uh, from our application that we'll build. So this is an example of a query. So right here, you specify the type of operation. In this case, it's a query. And then you specify the name of the query that we want to use, depending on the type definitions that you have. So I've already written this query get posts, which returns us just that, the posts from our database. And here we specify the fields from that uh, query that we want. And these are, of course, defined as well in our type definitions that what each resource returns in terms of fields. And if I press the play button here, it's actually going to fetch from our database our data and returns it in a in this object inside of this data inside of this get posts object. So each time we send a query, our result is sent back in a object that has the same name as that query, unless we have some errors, and then we will get an object um, errors right here. And then we'll have our errors there. So here, as you can see, we get exactly the data that we asked for, uh, ID, body, all the way through uh, comment count. And here to demonstrate to you the flexibility of um, GraphQL, we can say, just let's just get the ID and the body. And if we press play, we get exactly that data. So bear in mind that this is on the server right now. That means none, none of this data has been sent to the client. So the server gets this request and then on the server decides what data to fetch. It fetches all of the data from the database and then it filters out the data that the user didn't ask for and then returns a smaller payload of data. So here, if you want to add more fields, we can actually do control space and this tool self documents and it fetches automatically our types and knows what to expect. So here, if we forgot our fields, we can just do um, control space and then click on create that. And if I want to get the username, now I add these two and I hit enter and we get those fields now as well. Now this tool is available for your front end developer. Once you expose this, once you deploy this app and you give this base URL, which will be something other than localhost if you deploy it live, your front end developer will have access to this tool and then will learn how your API works, your GraphQL API works without you having to write any documentation. They can just click on this schema tab and they will see all the queries and mutations available. For example, if they want to see how the get, get posts query works, they can click on it and they will see the type and the type of data each of the fields have, and they will learn how to actually interact with your API without you having to write any documentation. This is what I mentioned earlier by GraphQL being self-documenting. Now let's look at mutations. So let me close this. If we go here, I've already written these two mutations for login and register. If I were to run the login user, or pass it, uh, of course, I've already written the code for this saying that, look, the login requires a username and a password and returns a couple of things. One of them is a JSON web token that we will use on our client to um, authenticate the user and keep them authenticated for a period uh, of time. If I click here and I click on the login user um, mutation, there we go. We get our token back, which we will use later to um, access protected routes like creating posts or liking or commenting on posts.
And uh, I've already like as well uh, thought about validation and server validation, which is an important thing for us to learn to validate the data. And for example, as we see here, we already have a user with the username user. If we were to try to register another user with that username and click here on register user, we get errors and we get as well an array of errors right here and saying confirm password, passwords must match actually it validated the passwords before the user. If I were to put two matching passwords, it will still have an error saying that the username is taken because it is taken. And now if I solve all the, uh, the errors, let's say user two, which doesn't exist on our database. And we say the email, um, well, I set it up to be Jane. So I was meant to type Jane here as a username and this should go through. And we are requesting more fields than just the token and we click uh, here, register, and there we go. We get all the details back of uh, from our user table record, and we can use this on the client to authenticate and send protected route requests. So yeah, and by the way, I didn't mean protected route, I meant protected operations since there's only one route when using GraphQL. So I just wanted to demonstrate quickly our app. And uh, yeah, this is, of course, we have more mutations and queries to build once we start building this app. I hope that this gave you a clear understanding of what GraphQL is and that you're excited for building this project. I know I'm excited about releasing this series. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.